Well, I felt a calling to religious life when I was a child. Um, but I always thought I'd be in some kind of active order, so teaching or missionary, that kind of thing. But as I grew up, I couldn't find anything that really resonated within my heart. I received a beautiful grace from God telling me that He was still calling me and that Therese would help me. And so from that, I discovered Therese was a Carmelite and I read her book and I felt drawn to have that deep relationship with God that she had, that willingness to give all to God for the sake of the church and the world. For me, it was interesting when I was, I come from Sydney, so when I felt called to Carmel, I had, um, I'd met the sisters in Sydney and um, I also came up and met the sisters up here. And just, there's no particular reason, but when I met the sisters up here, I just felt, this is it. This was the place. Mum read the book of St. Teresa's life, and St. Teresa's our founder, and Mum got so excited about it. So I was about 10 or 11 at this time. And she would tell everybody she meets, oh, St. Teresa says, you know, praying is just friendship with God. And, that's the first I'd heard, and so I thought, yeah, that sounds really neat, you know, dress up in a habit, and so I told Mum that I was thinking I might be a St. Teresa type nun. Well, she didn't tell anybody anymore about St. Teresa's head. It was like, yeah, but I really had to go against the culture in many ways, very secular culture. Well, come to Carmel, and it's like wall to wall Jesus. It's just, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, right, I get, I get it, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Within the Carmelite order, we have that balance between silence and solitude and time in community. And that's very important throughout our whole day. At first, I struggled with the silence and solitude. It felt confronting in a sense. And so I didn't have that peace until I really felt I could give all to this life. When I reached that real conviction inside myself that Jesus really did love me in spite of my sins, it wasn't just peace, it was over, overwhelming joy. A peace and a joy that has never left me since. Coming a Carmelite is not a matter of, I think I'll enter Carmel and then we put on this Carmelite on top of you. <laughs> it's something that, that grows. It's, my understanding of a religious vocation is comes from inside where God is. The Holy Spirit touches you in, inside of you. And that resonates with a particular way of living your Christian discipleship. I think the key is, if you're feeling a call to religious life, is that you're doing everything you can to be open to the Holy Spirit. So that means the sacraments of the church, reading and reflecting with the scriptures, praying with the scriptures, having a spiritual director that can help guide you and prompt you and help you to really see what the Spirit's saying in your life. And then, as we say, take the plunge. Um, try to investigate, see where the heart is leading. Basically, the structure is all built around our life of prayer which is formal prayer in the prayer of the church and in the sacraments, and then our own prayer as a community, praying the hour of prayer in the morning and the evening, then our own personal time. So there's a, a long stretch in the middle of the day, we have about an hour and a half, and there's a long stretch overnight as well, which is quiet time. Then there's work has to fit into that. so. We have a work session in the morning and a work session in the afternoon, so that's whatever needs to be done. So this morning I was cooking lunch, for instance. <laughs> Night time we tend to sit around in a big circle and we have a little handicraft, some of us, and we can just talk about the kind of day we've had.
Well, I should say our primary work is prayer. We're, we're the prayers in the church. So Jesus tells us in the scriptures to pray continuously. So that's the gift that Carmel gives to the church. Well, Formator is an appointment, so it's a role I've been asked to do. So that's basically walking with newer sisters through their, their whole journey of learning what it's like to live in a monastery and the adaptation, which is huge. <laughs> Just listening with them for where God's moving in their life. I mean, I love working in the sacristy to think that I'm helping prepare for the holy sacrifice of the Mass. That's just such a beautiful work and um, I really feel connected to God in that. And then on a practical sense, we've sort of got the veggie garden going, <laughs> which has been a great community effort, uh, especially for the younger sisters. I've got to say being a formator is really good for your faith life because I, I just have to lean on Jesus so heavily. It's his job, it's his, he's the one who's called new sisters here. St. Therese and the other Carmelite saints taught me that prayer is missionary. It reaches out to the whole world beyond any walls, countries, borders. You can reach everyone. And for me personally, Teresa was such a charismatic person. She was a people person. She was an outgoing person. Um, that connected with me. That's <laughs> sort of where I come from too. So people sometimes think that monastic nuns are kind of um, introverts and, and silent and everything else. Well, no, we're not all. <laughs> we're not all that. And actually, in a community, we need the balance of both, really. The introverts help the extroverts to find that stillness and silence and listening skill, and the extroverts help the introverts to, to be able to share and talk with one another. So it's, it's wonderful living with a group of diverse personalities because we help each other. Fundamentally, we have to believe that God loves us and be open and pray and be open to receive his love because only by receiving his love can we give love. St. Teresa tells us that the only way we know we are growing in prayer is how we're living our life. So in prayer, if we open ourselves, surrender ourselves, surrender our agenda and our controlling and allow God to work with us, then flows from that everything else. One thing that is priority for all of us is Jesus. And even the, the way our monastery is, the architecture, you know, it's all built around the central courtyard and in the very middle is the crucifix, is Jesus. I had never, I had talked to God, but I'd never considered that really prayer. That was until Teresa taught me that prayer is friendship with God. It's sharing everything with God. I just entrust the whole day to the Holy Spirit. It's only in Him. That's the only way I could find tranquility in any life, but even in this life. Prayer is not just for religious or priests. Prayer is for everyone. God wants that deep friendship, relationship with every single person. That's what he created us for, to be united with him. Yeah, the, the biggest benefit is just having that friendship with, with Jesus and letting that be my whole day. <laughs> my whole life, my whole reason for existence. Yeah. I love the Carmelite life and I, I love giving myself to a life of prayer, deepening my union with God and reaching out to the world in compassion and love. And to be, as St. Therese said, love in the heart of the church. <laughs>